Today on Rapport. So in sum, the Dar Malampaya Fund projects intended to rehabilitate farmer beneficiary victims supposedly of typhoons on Doi and Pepeng were all ghost projects with no delivery whatsoever. Former President Arroyo and her cabinet officials faced plunder charges over the Malampaya Fund. The Philippines gets another seal of approval. Investment grade status from credit agency Moody's. And talks between U.S. President Barack Obama and Republican leaders fail to end a government shutdown. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and five members of her cabinet are named in the plunder complaint for the misuse of the Malampaya Fund. Natasha Gutierrez reports. Another plunder case for two of the country's most notorious women. Former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and alleged pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Lim Napoles. The Justice Department files the plunder charges with the Office of the Ombudsman, accusing Napoles and her cronies in government agencies of pocketing 900 million pesos from the Malampaya Fund through the Department of Agrarian Reform. The money meant for farmers affected by typhoons on Doi and Pepeng was diverted to Napoles' dubious non-governmental organizations. So in sum, the Dar Malampaya Fund projects intended to rehabilitate farmer beneficiary victims supposedly of typhoons on Doi and Pepeng were all ghost projects with no delivery whatsoever. A total of 24 individuals face charges from this batch alone. Aside from Napolis and Arroyo, the list includes former Executive Secretary Eduardo Ermita, former Budget Secretary and now Congressman Rolando Andaya, Budget Undersecretary Mario Relampagos, and ex-Agrarian Reform Chief Nasser Pangandaman. Other DAR officials include then-Director of DAR Finance and Management Service Teresita Panlilio and ex-DAR USEC Narci Nieto. The government officials allegedly received hefty kickbacks. As a result of this whole scheme of diverting the 900 million Malampaya Fund allotted to DAR to the Napoles NGOs on the basis of manufactured and fake letter requests from mayors and MOAs, kickbacks or commissions amounting to 337 million 775,000 pesos were distributed all around to the public officials who, participate, who participated in the plunder scheme. The following are the public officials, officials specifically identified by the whistleblowers as having received kickbacks or commissions from Napoles, the same being their share of their indispensable participation in the execution of the plunder scheme. Nasser Pangandaman, 75 million pesos received in cash from Napoles and through bank withdrawal care of Rene Maglanque. Teresita Panlilio, 14 million pesos received in cash from Napoles and through bank withdrawal. Narciso Nieto, 6 million pesos received through bank withdrawal care of Evelyn De Leon. And Ruby Tuason, 242 million 775,000 received through bank withdrawals for a still unidentified principal. Tuason, the former social secretary of former President Joseph Estrada, is also facing charges. Arroyo and Ermita were not spared and are accused of helping facilitate the release of funds. As to the participation and culpability of former President Arroyo and executive sec former executive secretary Ermita, the release of the SARO and the NCA would not have been possible were it not for the hastily issued EO, which invalidly liberalized the exploitation of the Malampaya Fund for purposes not contemplated by existing laws and the latter's approval, Executive Secretary Ermita's approval, of the request for authority of Secretary Andaya. The Malampaya Fund can only be used for energy-related projects, but the DOJ complaint says Andaya requested to use Malampaya money for flood victims on October 8, 2009.
five days later, on October 13, Arroyo and Ermita approved the request and issued EO-848, allowing the Malampaya Fund to be used for areas affected by natural calamities. This leniency of control displayed by the former president in the use of and access to an essentially presidential discretionary fund made possible the plunder of such fund, either intentionally or through gross inexcusable negligence. Others facing charges are DAR staff members, Candaba Mayor Rene Maglanque, and Nepal's former employees listed as presidents of her NGOs for forging signatures and faking liquidation documents. The list includes her brother Ronald Francis Lim and her nephew Ronald John Lim. First lawmakers, now the former president and other government agency officials, face charges. The second batch of cases illustrates the massive scope of the scam and the shocking amounts involved. Natasha Gutierrez, Rappler, Manila. The story of how the Malampaya Fund went to Port Barrel Queen Janet Lim Napolis shows how it's worse than its predecessor, the 728 million peso fertilizer fund scam. In the fertilizer fund scam, lawmakers, law officials, and dubious suppliers supposedly benefited from kickbacks in overpriced fertilizers. In the Malampaya Fund scam, only a few people shared the money with the bulk, 900 million pesos going to Napoles. This time, local government officials had their signatures forged by Napoles' team in MOAs and project proposals. The Malampaya Fund represents royalties from the oil and gas explorations and operations in the waters off Palawan. In October 2009, President Gloria Arroyo allowed 900 million pesos taken from the fund to help farmers affected by typhoons that year. To go by the accounts of whistleblowers and the internal probe of the Department of Agrarian Reform, it was a premeditated crime. A whistleblower says Napoles informed her staff she was able to get some funding from the DAR as early as July or August that year. This was a month or so before the government set aside the 900 million pesos from the Malampaya Fund to help farmers. Of the 12 Napoles NGOs that cornered the 900 million peso funds, four were registered three months before an agreement was reached to tap the funds. These 12 NGOs supposedly entered into an agreement with 97 local government units to implement projects amounting to between 7.5 million pesos to 10 million pesos. Based on an earlier Rappler report, Napoles got first crack at the Malampaya Fund based on advance information provided by a department secretary. The Malampaya Fund scam comes only three years after the 2004 fertilizer scam was investigated by the Senate Blue Ribbon and the Agriculture Committees. Former President and now Pampanga Representative Gloria Arroyo says her extensive discretion over the use of the Malampaya Fund is lawful. In a statement, Arroyo's legal counsel and chief of staff, Raul Lambino, says the funds were authorized, quote, pursuant to the policies and purposes as mandated by the provisions of Presidential Decree 910. Under Presidential Decree 910, the government's share from the Malampaya Fund should be used for energy-related projects. After a series of typhoons in 2009, Arroyo issued an executive order expanding the use of the fund to include rehabilitation purposes. Arroyo's then budget secretary and now Camarina Sur representative Rolando Andaya Jr. asks why he was dragged into the case when none of the whistleblowers testified against his direct involvement. Andaya says his job, quote, did not come with an early warning device that would alert him about a, quote, possible hijacking or pilfering when the funds are on its way to the beneficiaries. He also criticizes the Justice Department's supposed file now investigate later tactics in relation to the scam, saying he was not given the chance to respond to the charges. Senator Miriam Santiago rejects President Aquino's statement the money given to senators from the government's disbursement acceleration program cannot be considered bribery because it was given months after the conviction of former Chief Justice Renato Corona. In a television interview, Santiago says bribery after the act is still bribery. Aquino earlier defended DAP from, its criti from criticism. His administration used it to bribe senators to convict Corona. He says the money could not have been bribery because it was released in October 2012 while Corona was convicted in May 2012. 
Budget Secretary Florencio Abad admits an average of 50 million pesos was released to senators, but says it was meant to address underspending. Santiago, former Senator Joker Arroyo, former Budget Secretary Benjamin Jocno, and constitutionalist Father Joaquin Bernas question the constitutionality of DAP. Beyond the bribery issue, Santiago also says the administration's defense of the legality of DAP was, quote, dead wrong. The palace says the Constitution and the Administrative Code allow the President to realign savings, but citing Article 6, Section 25 of the Constitution, Santiago says the government cannot transfer, but only augment existing items in the budget. It was a night everything went wrong. But it's not just about chance, it's mostly about negligence. Four months after the surrender blast, the government is pointing fingers not just at the unit owners, but also at the three Ayala firms. Bea Kupin reports. Hindi na natin papayagan ang bahala na o okay na, lalong lalo na sa mga masela na sistema tulad nito vaporized distribution system ng gas. A series of unfortunate events and negligence caused the two surrender explosion on May 31, 2013. An interagency task force led by the Interior Department and a private company say the explosion was caused by the leak and accumulation of gas inside Unit 501B. Rojas says the leak was caused when a gas range was moved without authorization during renovations. Safety devices inside the unit, a leak detector and a gas valve failed to work. Add to that, the building's sole leak detector also failed to go off. So why didn't residents smell the leaking gas? The investigation finds two surrender gas supplier Bonifacio Gas Corp lacking in technical competence. So in the process of vaporizing the same, nawawala yung odorant, nawawala yung, yung baho o yung amoy ng ethyl mercaptan, kaya marahil hindi na amoy itong leak na gas na ito. Four people died as a result of the blast. Three Abinson employees and Angelito San Juan, the guest occupant of Unit 501B. Found liable are the unit owners and caretaker, construction company RM Ladrido, Tu Serendra, Bonifacio Gasp Corp, and Makati Development Corp. But the DILG stopped short of recommending charges against the four. Rojas says it is beyond their mandate. <laughs> Now, whether these contributing elements constitute legal liability, mas mabuti yung mga abogado ang gumawa. He says it is up to the Justice Department to file charges. Tower B of Tu Serendra can now be returned to its unit owners. As far as I'm concerned at this point, I think it's just time for people to move on. And uh, I'm just glad that we have closure. But it might not be business as usual right away. Well, some of them, um, actually, I know one that didn't want to come back anymore. Parang talagang she doesn't want to go back to Tusarenda. And then some of them are, are taking uh, psychiatric help. A lot of them are... Even now? Sir? Even now, yeah. Sure. The Surrender Blast Probe officially ends with the findings. But will the shockwaves continue to reverberate for top condo developer Ayala Land, which calls itself a trusted name in urban land development? Bayakupin Rappler, Manila. The Philippines wins investment grade status from credit rating agency Moody's, another seal of approval for the country after international debt watchers Standard & Poor's and Fitch also awarded investment grade status early this year. Moody's says its decision to give Manila a BAA3 rating with positive outlook is based on the Philippines' strong growth, political stability, and improved governance. A BAA3 rating is the lowest in the outfit's investment ranks, but represents an important milestone for the country. The Philippine economy expanded 6.8% in 2012 and 7.6% in the first half of 2013, among the highest in Asia-Pacific. Presidential Communications Chief Ricky Carandang says the upgrade is, quote, proof that the continuing fiscal reforms are further improving our credibility in the international community. An investment grade is a seal of good housekeeping. It tells investors it's safe to do business in the country. It also means lower borrowing costs for the Philippines, generating savings used for social services. On the fourth round of talks to allow the United States greater access to Philippine bases, the two countries disagree on 
critical provisions. Philippine Defense Undersecretary Pio Lorenzo Batino says there are, quote, gaps in these provisions that need more work. The agreement aims to increase presence of U.S. troops in the Philippines. It's also expected to boost the defense capability of the armed forces. The panels have not yet agreed on the time frame of the agreement. The Philippines wants a time frame shorter than the 20-year agreements the U.S. has with other countries. Foreign Affairs Assistant Secretary Carlos Soreta adds, Our guidance is that the duration should be such that they cannot build permanent bases. For the first time, Pope Francis will address Filipinos attending a Manila-based conference on October 18th. On Thursday, Manila Archbishop Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle says the Pope agreed to deliver a video message at the closing Mass for the Philippine Conference on New Evangelization. The conference will be held from October 16 to 18 at the University of Santo Tomas. It is the biggest event in the Philippine Catholic Church this year. Talks between U.S. President Barack Obama and Republican leaders failed to end a government shutdown Wednesday, with both sides accusing the other of refusing to move off the hardened positions. Obama meets with Democratic and Republican leaders, including House Speaker John Boehner, for more than an hour. Speaking after the meeting, Boehner says the president reiterated one more time that he will not negotiate. Obama says he would not negotiate. He would not negotiate on budget matters until Republicans pass a bill that would reopen government and raise the U.S. debt ceiling. Senate Democrats repeatedly blocked Republican House funding bills that seek to delay Obama's signature health care reform bill. The deadlock leaves government without a budget for the new fiscal year, sending thousands of federal workers home. Obama also sends Wall Street a blunt warning that it should be worried about the political crisis that could trigger a U.S. debt default. He says, when you have a situation in which a faction is willing to potentially default on U.S. government obligations, then we are in trouble. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number five, the U.N. Security Council urges the Syrian government to make aid more accessible to civilians trapped in the ongoing conflict. In a statement, the 15-nation body asks the Syrian government to, quote, take immediate steps to facilitate the expansion of humanitarian relief operations and lift bureaucratic impediments and other obstacles. The Syrian government opposed aid missions from nearby countries, fearing supplies will go to rebel forces. At number seven, a California jury clears concert promoter AEG Live for Michael Jackson's death by drug overdose. The jury dismisses the lawsuit filed by the Jackson family seeking millions of dollars in damages. The jury says AEG Live hired Dr. Conrad Murray and decided he was competent, clearing the concert promoter of liability. Jackson died in 2009 from an overdose of a drug given by Murray, who was convicted of involuntary slaughter in 2011 for giving the drug to Jackson. And at number 10, American best-selling author Tom Clancy dies at a hospital in Baltimore, Maryland on Tuesday. He was 66. The Baltimore Sun says Clancy died, quote, after a brief illness. He's famous for writing best-selling spy, thriller, and military science novels, including Patriot Games, Clear and Present Danger, and The Hunt for Red October. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page that crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our viewers emotionally the most. These 10 stories actually have gotten the most number of votes on their mood meter. If we take a look today, the story that's gotten the most number of votes, top vote getter is President Aquino dares critics impeach me. This is um, in the last 24 hours. Uh, he says 43% uh, are angry, 22% happy. That green echoing this mood for today's story. Philippines wins investment grade from Moody's, whopping 84% happy. You can see here the red plus, sorry, the green plus the green in, in the other stories lead to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. Well, that is Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, October 3, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. Okay.